Good morning everyone. So it is currently 7 18 a.m. November 14th and I got ready because I am going to go for a walk at one of my local parks. I like to start my mornings at least with one either mindfulness activity or self-care activity and so for my self-care activity I chose movement so I'm gonna go for a walk and I plan to do that for an hour and while I do that because as you saw we're doing a reading vlog I'm going to be reading after hours on milagro street by angelina lopez and so i ended up checking out this book off of libby so i'm gonna go ahead and read this listen to it while i'm getting my walk in and it's a total of so it's under 13 hours so i'm so excited to give this a listen to my voice is not awake yet <laughs> i'm really excited to go for a walk especially now that the weather's cooled down it is in the 60s so let's go ahead and head out Alex Doris slammed her bare shoulder into the door of her grandmother's bar. It is actually currently 5 30 p.m. and I thought we could finally go ahead and talk about this book. I'm currently on chapter 5 and I thought I would talk to you all a little bit about what I know so far and can I just say that when I was at the park <laughs> walking and listening to this the whole time I was I'm pretty sure I was blushing and just like oh <laughs> This shiz is spicy, okay y'all? I was not ready, I was not prepared like right off of the gate for that much spice. It was too early, it was too early in the morning. And so when it comes to romance, I feel like you never know the level of spice until you actually read the book, like unless the cover is super obvious. And I feel like this cover did you know show that there was going to be like some steam but you never know you know at least i don't until i fully read the book and just letting y'all know in case you know spice is not your kind of thing and to be honest i feel like for me when it comes to like steam or spice in a book i want it to be like a compliment like i'm shipping the characters and it's like a slow burn i really enjoy that so the main character's name is alex and so basically she's like this badass bartender from chicago it's where she's made a name for herself she's very well known on social media but her roots where her family is from is from kansas and so they have generations upon generations of Mexican Americans within their family living in Kansas and her abuelita, her grandma, owns a bar there and it's been established there for many many years and it's very well known, a part of the heritage there for the Mexican American community and so we're finding out that Alex ended up quitting her job to come back you know to her hometown so that she can help two other women in her family you know take on this bar and owning this bar and take it off of their grandmother's hand so they want to purchase it and alex has all of these ideas of what she wants to do with it like create a beer garden there and just completely renovate it and give it new life and so Naa abuela had other plans she apparently got like two other offers <laughs> so right now it's her coming back to her hometown and butting heads with her family and her family being like where have you been you left us which i mean definitely hits close to home it's a very real thing 
saying like the guilt that is felt when you go and pursue your dreams when you're part of a Mexican American household but Alex is definitely the kind of main character right now where she's very confident and just a little bit full of herself in a way so I can't relate with her too much yet when she first arrived literally you met the other main character the possible love interest who was a professor who ended up just you know casually being there to save her abuela <laughs> in her time of need and so on the very night she gets back she ends up having a one night stand with him that just you know happens and that's the blushing that was happening <laughs> as I was walking through my local park and so it so happens right now where I left off where you know Alex let her family know hey I quit my job I'm serious about being here I'm serious about owning this bar I have big plans and so she ends up finding out that she can't Stay with her mom because her mom is now seeing her dad again which is a whole other you know thing that we're <laughs> learning about where there's been issues there in the past and so her abuela's bar has these suites you know these areas where you can actually sleep as well so she ends up staying in one of them across from the professor who is also staying there. Drama ensues when she finds out that he is one of the other people who is offering to purchase her grandmother's bar and like turn it into a museum of sorts. So she just, of course, hates him now. She thought he was cute like <laughs> a couple hours ago, but no, she loathes him at this point. Hi everyone, so it is the next day. And listen, being in the queue, in the Taylor Swift queue waiting to get these tickets has made me realize, has made me reflect, really, if you will, on the fact that life is too short to read books that you're not enjoying. It's okay to DNF. I'm coming to this realization because in my mind it's very hard for me to do that. If I'm reading a book, I want to stick it out and know what happens. I want to see it through. This time of contemplation has also made me realize that I do not want to continue reading or listening to the audiobook that I was listening to. So the thing is, here's what happened. It has just ended up being way more steamy and smutty than I that I knew. And underneath all of that is a really good story, at least that I would enjoy. But I just can't get over the fact that the main character is so mean. Like I do not vibe with mean people like mean they have no reason for saying the things that they're saying like it's coming out of left field i'm sure i'm sure if i were to stick around we would peel back the onion layers here's the thing though i'm not in the place life-wise mental health-wise to want to do that you know what i mean i want to jump into a book and just enjoy the ride and i'm not enjoying the ride because I really don't like the main character. The way that she talks to the love interest, the other main character is just so dehumanizing, so mean. And if the roles were reversed and she were the one receiving what she's dishing out, it would just be so bad. And we don't believe in double standards around here. We should all be equally respected all, all the ways around. So yeah, it's just too toxic for, for my own liking. Like. You know, she needs to go to therapy. And so yeah, I feel for her because I wanted to enjoy this book. I wanted to like it. I wish things were different, you know what I mean? But yeah, so I'm deciding to DNF it, but I'm glad I gave it a try. And I love that about Libby that I can just give a book a try. And no harm, no foul. I didn't spend on it. So, you know, I tried. So, so far for what I was reading, I would give it a one or two stars simply because like the storyline itself is so interesting but yeah just not for me <laughs> but on the other hand that means that i am now freed up to read this book a cuban girl's guide to tea and tomorrow and i already heard the good news that this is going to be turned into a movie i think on netflix i could be wrong but if it is i am really even that more excited to read this because i have started this book already i'm currently on page 24 chapter 4 and i am enjoying this 
so far loving it we're talking about mental health from the get-go it's giving me how mon fuentes fell in love with the universe at first and instantly i was drawn and i was like yes i've been trying to find another book that can give me that feeling because it was so good and so i'm vibing with this so far and will definitely be talking about this more my in the queue reflections for the day thought i would give you all an update and just let you know you know if you're not feeling a book it's okay let it go maybe you'll be feeling it some other time maybe you won't but it's okay just let it let it go okay so i'll go ahead and talk to you all later and keep you updated if i get some taylor swift tickets hi everyone so it is a new day today is november 16th and it is currently almost 1 p.m so i already saw a therapy client for the day i don't have therapy clients until like 6 and 7 p.m today so i'm going to go ahead and take a mental break go on a little solo date adventure it is a beautiful and glorious gloomy day out it is currently 51 degrees outside here in south texas like that is my happy place <laughs> i am so so happy i haven't really filled you all in on this project that i've had in mind for a good while i've wanted to create a free little library to put outside my home so that my neighborhood can enjoy and i have pinterest boards saved of it but since it's not something that me and my husband have planned to build until probably like the spring or summertime, i thought that the fall time and winter time would be a good time to maybe shop for thrifted books look around so that way i can have a good substantial amount of books to share once we do do build that free little library and I'll talk to you all a little bit more about it once we get back home but right now I'm gonna go ahead and head out and do some thrifting see if I can find any interesting books I'm looking for children's books YA and some adult books so a little bit of everything so I'm gonna bring a snack with me we're gonna listen to some Taylor Swift because I'm mourning the fact that I did not get tickets You've probably seen all of the drama that has ensued over the queue and Ticketmaster. Um, I basically waited all day. My husband was also waiting and still we could not get tickets. so it is the next day today is november 17th it is thursday and it's also 8 50 so it's almost 9 a.m because i've been in a little dreamlight valley video game loop and i'm in love like that game has just been everything to me but i have a therapy client that i'm going to be seeing at 10 a.m and then i have one other therapy client later in the day and i have to do some other work things but i thought i would take some time to share with you all my thrift book haul for my future little library so i got so lucky at the thrift store like there were so many books i got some middle grade i got some children's books and i also got some like adult romance so thank you to whoever donated their books at texas thrift the main reason why i want to create you know a free little library in my area i wouldn't be able to register it as a free little library because then my address would come out wish i could do that so more people could possibly enjoy it but at the same time it also feels really special to know that my neighborhood or anyone just driving by is going to be able to enjoy it there are a good couple of free little libraries in my city and in neighboring cities but there aren't any in my neighborhood or in the neighborhoods around me and i live in like a central area of my city and so you tend to see more things like this on like the north end and so ideally when me and my husband bought our first home i really wanted to live on like the north end but prices were just so outrageous that like the dream area that i wanted to live in we just we couldn't and so i'm just so grateful and happy that we got to find a home 
that we love and that we've been gradually working on. Being able to do something special right where I am and in my neighborhood. I thought about younger me and how special it would have been to just walk down my neighborhood because I always used to when I was younger and to see a free little library. When I was little, I loved reading and I only stopped like later on in life. That would have been so special to me and I'm sure to like the other kids that I grew up with in that neighborhood. My husband felt the same way, you know, he would have really enjoyed having something like that in his neighborhood growing up. And I want to help create that in my neighborhood. I want the people in my neighborhood and my community to feel special and to feel like they can have something special too. We do have a main library, but not everyone necessarily always has access to those things for many different reasons. Especially as my time working as a case manager and facilitator with those in my community who are lower income, you really get validated and realize how important it is for children to have access to something just as simple as a library, to experiences that they can remember memories that they can make that can be special and that they can think of when they're older. That's it, those are all my thoughts so far. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into this thrift book haul. All of the books that I ended up getting ended up being 99 cents or like a dollar fifty and less. I think I only got two books that were a dollar fifty. So I guess let's start off with the middle grade that I ended up picking up. So first of all, I ended up hitting the jackpot because I found someone's graphic novel collection, like their middle grade graphic novels. And so the first book is this one right here. This is Just Jamie, and so basically it's about being in middle school, seventh grade, friends, frenemies, middle school, like, I needed books like this in middle school, you know what I mean? So this book was originally $12.99, and I got it for under 99 cents. The next book is called Camp, and first of all, I already loved it. Like, there's diversity, you know, in the children that I'm seeing, and that's something that I'm looking for in the books that I want to put in the little free library. Like, I want books that are in Spanish, that are in English, that have diversity, you know. So yeah, it's very important to me. I want kids to be able to read books and to see themselves represented in them. Artwork. Olive and Willow are happy campers, or are they? And so this book was also originally $12.99, and I got it for under a dollar. 99 cents so this is the book it says friends and foes danger and magic death and life last graphic novel that i ended up getting is the babysitter's club or at least one of them because i know there's a ton of them this one was 13.99 and i got it for 99 cents so now let's go ahead and get into the children's book so the first one that i found was the absent-minded toad this is by Javier Rondon, illustrations by Marcela Cabreras. It was originally written in Spanish and translated to English. Now this book, I remember seeing this recently at Barnes and Noble and it is The Good Egg, $17.99. My parents could never, like when we were growing up and I wish we would have gone thrift shopping because I probably could have found a lot of good children's books. So the next thing that I wanna show you all is not a children's book, it's actually a cookbook, but Disney related. I feel like I truly hit the jackpot with this book. So it's a Disney princess cookbook and I got this for $1.50. Part of me wants to keep this, but part of me also knows that someone else could really enjoy this. So let's go ahead and get into the more like adult type of book and so this first book is one that i've seen at barnes and noble recently also and i picked it up and i thought it was really cute so i couldn't believe that i found it at the thrift store and it's called the joy of forest bathing reconnect with wild places and rejuvenate your life so i love that this is very like self-care mindfulness oriented and there's really beautiful artwork inside as well so the next book that i found is called i'm not missing and this one was originally 14.99 it says how do you take on the future when so much of your past wasn't even real and so i think this is ya could be wrong but i'm pretty sure it's ya the next book that i ended up finding is called kids like us and I'm pretty sure there's autism representation in this. So this one was $10.99 and I got it for $0.99. Cents. Okay, so the next book that I found, the cover is freaking adorable. 
this book right here. So this one's called Famous in a Small Town. Okay, now listen, this last book, I am so frustrated because when I tried to take off the little sticker that they put on from the thrift store, I ended up ripping part of the cover. And so the perfectionist in me is so mad at myself. I did not know that it would rip off part of the cover because none of the other books ended up getting damaged, but this is the other book that I ended up finding and it's called The Cafe by the Sea, which honestly looks adorable as hell. Like this is so cute, but you can see this is the tear. The beloved author of the bookshop on the corner returns with a sparkling, sunny, soulful new novel. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of feeling this. I really wanna read this, so I have plenty of time if I do want to read it before I put it in the little library. But this was originally $15.99 and I got it for 99 cents. So in total, I got 12 bucks and spent under $20. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you all later because I have to go prep for work now. so it is a new day today is sunday it is like 40 degrees outside 40 degrees fahrenheit here in south texas it is so cold i am in christmas pjs right now just living we're having a cozy day in today i'm really excited because i'm going to play disney dreamlight right now i'm allowing myself to have a nice relaxing in bed you know kind of day and then later tonight me and my husband are going to be going to watch wakanda forever which i have been waiting so long to watch that movie i am so excited i'm so ready i've been trying to stay away from spoilers but for right now i wanted to update you all on this book that i've been reading a cuban girl's guide to tea and tomorrow so the main character of this book is lila reyes off the bat I already love that as you're reading this book, it already brings up topics of mental health. So Lila lives with her family in Miami and they have a panaderia there. It's a family panaderia. Her and her family are Cuban Americans, you know, in Miami now established. And Lila is going through a really tough time in her life, which I feel like is very relatable. She's at this stage in her life. Graduation has happened. She's had to say goodbye to one of her near and closest friends and didn't really get closure because she thought that her and her friend had agreed to follow a similar path and her friend chose something different and didn't tell her until last minute so she's grieving that relationship she also lost her grandmother which was a whole piece of her heart which i relate to very much when i was reading this i was like I understand exactly you know what what that looks and feels like and so she's going through that as well grieving that and then on top of all of that now she's also having to grieve a romantic relationship because her boyfriend ends up breaking up with her so imagine like having to process and grieve all of those things simultaneously at once as well and she ends up having a breakdown or having like a crisis moment and what that looked like for her something that she used as a coping mechanism like running movement is great right especially for our mental health but it ended up crossing into self-harm territory um one day when she just continually ran for hours and hours and hours non-stop 
and she was far away from home. Her family was scared trying to look for her. And we're getting glimpses and parts of the story here and there of what her family felt, what she felt, you know, when when she was found in the aftermath of that. Like this could be a real person somewhere because these things do happen as a mental health therapist. There's a lot of this that I find relatable to, um, specifically for Latina women and others who experience something similar. And so how her family ends up dealing with this situation is that they decide to send her away because they feel like she's not coping well um, here in Miami in the US and they end up sending her with one of her aunts or like prima tias, one of those <laughs> kinds of situations. So her family ends up sending her to live and stay for three months in Winchester, England. Of course, Lila is upset. She's angry, pulled away from the people that she knows and loves, from what she loves as far as baking and the panaderia because she wants to help take this over and keep that legacy running and help her family. It's what she actually really is passionate about and wants to do. And at least even from a therapist's point of view, my initial reaction in my heart was just so tight when I was reading this because it made me so sad. Because in reality, what she needed was the support of her family and for her to be able to plug into the activity that she loves so much without the worry or pressure of feeling like she had to do this to keep the business running but it would have been so healing and helpful if her family would have just like come together and baked with her without making it feel so heavy and like what she did is something that she should feel ashamed of there's a lot of shame and blame that was pretty much put on her even though it's not said there are like little comments that are said here and there that can definitely be hurtful but i think the most hurtful thing and the loudest thing was saying we're shipping you off but of course i understand it's needed for the story we're gonna see what ends up happening like lila just needed some therapy the support of her family and friends and to get to gradually plug into the activities that she loved but i'm so looking forward to continuing to reading this because right now she's there and obviously loathing it having a terrible time because for someone it might be like oh she should be enjoying being in england what an adventure it's totally not an adventure when you're grieving like multiple things in your life and so i feel for her a lot and i'm already feeling very connected to her in that sense and i can't wait to see what happens because right now she's very uncomfortable trying to get used to a completely different culture miami from england right and she feels like a lot of the things that she's doing just aren't right she's trying to bake there and so when i'm currently in the book she's met the possible love interest and of course they do not get along instantly what i'm reading in the story is that he's basically going to help her through her funk is what it says on there but basically help her through her grieving process and so far i'm really liking the writing in this story i feel like it's very easy to read relaxing even because i'm not having a hard time picturing what the author is saying it's just very relaxing and i'm enjoying it so much I am currently just cuddled in my couch. I'm having a recovery day, so is my husband. We're just trying to rest and recover after the first back-to-back -back <laughs> holiday. And so I spent the morning just asking myself, what do I need today for my own self-care and recovery and rest? And I wanted to just curl up in my couch. I've officially been testing it and just 
loving this couch so much. Me and my sister were watching Wednesday here yesterday and we had the best time and I'm currently continuing to read this book. I'm on chapter 12 right now and I thought I would give you all an update because I am loving it. There are so many cute little moments and this feels like a really cozy read specifically because of the setting of the book also it's very cold in winchester also the descriptions of the food that lila is cooking in the kitchen that she's currently in she is gradually adding in her own recipes and i love that her and orion already had some really cute scenes where they've both given each other basically like the cliff notes or spark notes version of you know the things that they're going through that are really difficult and they're just really building a friendship right now and i love it they had such a cute moment that had me dying let me see if i can find it really quick okay so on chapter nine they had been walking together and orion made like the little joke or comment that you know he bets that lila has never used instant cake mix that she always makes it from scratch lila's basically asking if she's going to end up being a replacement for a girl that ended up standing him up. There's this little part at the end where it says, I hand over his sweater. What happens if Charlotte shows up at your door tomorrow? Nothing happens. Not after what I heard from Teddy. See, market cake mixes are fine. He backs away, winking like the stars. But I like the real deal. Excuse me? <laughs> it's so cute, y'all. I'm having the best time. And so I can't wait to finish this today. I will give you a ranking, an update, what I think... But yeah, that is my goal for this morning, just to spend some time enjoying this and reading for fun and relaxation. <laughs> So excuse the hair because I just finished showering. I worked out a little while ago while I was watching some Christmas movies and I wanted to read you all a little portion of this book to give you an idea of it because I am in love. Like this is so cozy. It has such a heartwarming vibe to it that I was not expecting. Lila and Orion had just gone to see friends at a concert. They rode on his motorcycle, had some adventures together and now they're currently planning out to start gazing together which is the cutest thing ever and so the part that i'm going to read to you is at the end of chapter 15 and it says she's not hanging her future on any wishing stars that's for sure she's gonna make herself the star i look up and out again but it's still fun to wish if that little falling light was in an airplane what would you wish for trying your cuban food i slap my gaze at him that's a given is it really he swivels resting on one elbow you say these things but i've yet you will i'm starting you off with something called the cubano sandwich no hints except it requires braising a couple pork shoulders and baking a ham so days maxwell no need to waste a wishing star now what's your real wish his happy grin cinches closed he dashes his hand toward the muted stars i've stopped wishing on those long ago i mean i still have hopes and dreams and it certainly doesn't mean i sit around waiting for things to happen but i've made this deal with the universe i've learned not to ask more of it 
it than what I'm given. I've grown to find peace and acceptance and not fighting what I can't control. I don't come to God or the universe as a beggar anymore. It's helped me. His mouth wobbles slightly and see sometimes the universe gives me really fun nights showing visiting Cuban bakers around my friends music and motorbikes and our native snack food. So you might want to be home. I get that and all the reasons why. But right now you're here and I can't find myself thinking that that's all that bad, Lila. No, it's not all that bad at all. A night wind comes through, blowing through all the heaviness and swirling our empty plastic cups down the hill. So we share the rest of the cider, passing the bottle back and forth like heathens. And it doesn't matter that this namesake constellation is only visible in Australia or New Zealand in June. I'm here in his hemisphere. I find Orion anyway. Needless to say, I am having such a fun time. Like it's a rainy, cold day outside. It's such a cozy time and I'm gonna keep reading but I just wanted to share that little portion of the book with you. So cute. No sleep while things run dry I'm empty I can't see I'm blinded by this concrete Hi everyone, so it is the next day and I did end up finishing this book this morning and oh my goodness. I also made myself a cup of Teda Manzanilla, some chamomile tea because drinking it in this mug and drinking tea just felt completely right given this book and what it is all about. So, so when you picture the song Cardigan, this book right here is what comes to mind. Oh my goodness, it just ended on such a sweet and heartwarming tone i just wanted more i did not want this story to end and i mean that in the best way possible i just love the characters lila and orion just make each other better you know what i mean when you picture this book picture like going to england visiting your tia who now lives there has her own little cute cozy in called the old crow it's like so cute the main characters actually having like deep and heartwarming conversations where they're getting to know each other and just gradually letting each other in and healing together like at the same time because of the various things that they've gone through or currently going through. So if you're looking for a really cozy, sweet and comforting romance this is it right here. If you've never read it, there wasn't any spice in this book. So if that's not something that you're into. And so that is it for this reading vlog, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed it. So definitely stay tuned for that. As you can see, there are already Christmas decorations. If you watched my last video, I would have already shown you all of my decorations and things. So I'm definitely in the holiday spirit and really excited to keep reading. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new to my channel, if you enjoy lifestyle, house plants, bookish things, self-care, mental health, all of those things that just nourish our minds and souls and you just want to have a little cozy place on the internet to talk about all those things and to share about those things, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and join the community that we have on here. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Stay cozy and I will catch you in my next video. Bye. Every Christmas, baby. Reindeer's coming out to play. Santa Claus is packing the presents, making sure you've been behaving okay.